everyone. I hope you got a turn to go outside and examine a tree so you know all about trees. And I did a little story for you the last time where I read One Blowy Night. And this one talked about a tree, an oak tree that had fallen over. I love this story. Do you remember how it had that special pop-up page? Ooh, if you don't remember, let me open it because it was a beautiful oak tree with homes for all of the animals to live. Ooh, you see it? It's such a big page in this little book. I love it. So today I'm going to read you a story about leaves and then I'm going to show you some pictures of leaves. Before I read my story, I'm going to show you um, some of the trees that we talked about. So we talked about a ginkgo and a ginkgo leaf looks like a little tiny fan. It's my favorite. Here's a ginkgo leaf. Now this is a leaf from a real ginkgo tree and to save the leaf I put it under a heavy book and then I piled some blocks on top so it made the leaf dry and it made the leaf very flat and then I put it in a machine to put the plastic on it. Do you see that shiny plastic around it? So this ginkgo leaf, I love it and we have some ginkgo trees by school that are green and then when they lose their leaves they're yellow and so beautiful. So it reminds me of a little fan. I love it. All right, I have another leaf to show you. Okay, here is a picture of the oak tree. And wait till you see this big leaf. Whoa, it's pretty big. So the leaf from the oak tree has all of these points. It's not a rounded one that's nice and smooth. The ginkgo one is rounded. This one has these points. Now the oak leaf will fall down in the fall. Guess what else falls down from an oak tree? An acorn. So look at this acorn. It's a little seed. So sometimes these will drop from the trees and squirrels pick them up and they use them for food in the winter. Sometimes they fall down and they get stuck underground and they might start to grow a new oak tree. That's what Percy the park keeper planned. Ooh, my goodness. Percy the park keeper planted that acorn at the end of the story. All right, here's a picture of a sycamore tree. And if you remember, I said the sycamore tree has leaves that might be as big as your head. Are you ready to see? Oh my goodness. What? It covers my whole face. It's so big. So that's the leaf of a sycamore tree. Ooh, do you see how this one got a little crack there? I'm glad I put it through the plastic machine so it didn't rip apart. All right, I have a maple tree. These are the ones, this tree might be in your yard or you would be able to find it, I bet, if you went on a hike. A maple leaf can be a beautiful red. Again, here's a leaf that has points. And sometimes people say that a maple leaf looks like a star. A star has five points. Let's count the points here. One, two, three, four, Five. So if you find a leaf outside and it has these five points, it might be a maple leaf. Now a maple tree also drops seeds. I call these seeds helicopters. Look at this. Two seeds together. And God made that maple tree with its seeds very special. When you would drop this, it spins around very slowly to the ground. Or if it's a windy day, the wind will take the seed and blow it somewhere far away. And again, if this gets buried under the soil, a maple tree might start to grow. So those are little maple seeds. My last tree I have a picture of is called a poplar. Ooh, I was just remembering. We'd also talked about these being deciduous trees. Look at the poplar leaf. It has one point, but it's rounded like that. Isn't that beautiful? It has little teeny points. They look like little zigzags or little teeth. So the poplar leaf. And finally, if you remember, I had conifers, which were evergreen trees. Here's a conifer tree. A conifer or an evergreen tree, like this fir tree. Ooh, I think I said conifer, but it's also a fir. And those are the trees that drop pine cones. So here's a little tiny pine cone. The bigger the tree, it might have bigger pine cones. When I was on vacation once, the trees were so big and the pine cones were this big. Huge pine cones. So this one's kind of little. But if you did a project with a pine cone, Mrs. Young said you could make a bird feeder with one of these. I wonder if you did. All right. 
My story today, I love this book because the person who wrote the book is someone who's very special. She is a lady, and when she was a girl, she went to St. Paul School. That's the school that I'm at right now, St. Paul School. And she worked very hard when she was at St. Paul School. She had fun. She was a hard worker. And then she grew up to be a lady, and she said, you know what? I wonder if I could write books. So she is an author, and she wrote the story that I brought for today. Now, she didn't draw the pictures. Someone else drew the pictures. That would be the illustrator. But she is the one who wrote the story. So you know what? That's so exciting for St. Paul. It's nice to have someone who went to St. Paul grow up and become someone who's very important. So we love that. And her name is Steph Wade. Here's her book. It's a new one. It's called The Last Leaf. The very last leaf. Wait a minute. This reminds me of a leaf that I have. Wait a minute. Do they look the same? Do you think this is a story about a poplar tree? Hmm. So it's written by Steph Wade, and it's illustrated by Jennifer Davidson. When look at on the, on the back, I have a leaf who looks happy, and then on this side, the leaf looks a little worried. Hmm, I wonder what's going to happen. You know what else I like about books? This book has a jacket. Just like you wear a jacket to protect you when you're outside. So look at this. The jacket comes off. So it protects the book from getting all bumped up or scratched. So sometimes when I read books, this jacket gets in my way. So I'm going to take the jacket off. And let's see if the book looks the same. Hmm. It does. Wait a minute. Does it look like I have two books? This is just the jacket. So this one is called The Very Last Leaf by Steph Wade. Ooh, looks like a breezy day. The Very Last Leaf by Steph Wade. When you know what Steph Wade said? She said she wrote this book for her mom and dad. Ooh, I bet they're so excited for her. Okay. There's the very last leaf. From his first day of school. Wait a minute. Do leaves go to school? So is this a book that's an imaginary book? Yes, it's an imaginary book. At the library, we call those books fiction books. So this is a fiction book about the leaf. From his very first day of school in the spring, Lance Cottonwood was the best and brightest student. He blossomed and budding. Look at me, I'm a leaf. He breezed through wind resistance. Better luck next time. He was a breath of fresh air in photosynthesis 101. Ah, don't you just love the taste of sunlight in the morning? He passed pigment changing with flying colors. Yellow, everybody, how do you do? During his last class of the autumn semester, Lance began to worry about his final exam. The test would take him from the top of his tree down to the grass below. So did these trees change, these leaves changed colors, didn't they? So now they're ready to fall. He's not sure he's ready for that. The other leaves couldn't wait to take the leap. But Lance Cottonwood... He didn't feel that way because Lance Cottonwood was afraid to fall. Oh no. You know what? Remember how I said this book might be about a poplar leaf because it looks the same? But I wonder if Steph Wade was writing it about a cottonwood tree because his name is Lance Cottonwood. Ooh, here he is, afraid to fall. Lance was jealous of his neighbor, Doug Fir, ooh, a conifer tree. Doug Fir was an evergreen and evergreens didn't have to fall. Doug got to sit on his branch and feel the cold, wet snow on his face all winter long. But Lance was a cottonwood and cottonwood trees are deciduous. They lose their leaves in autumn. So Lance was expected to fall like all the Lance Leaf Cottonwood ancestors who came before him. Hey, Steph Wade used the word 
deciduous. You already know what a deciduous tree does. When autumn arrived, one by one, all the students let go and they floated to the ground below. But Lance was comfortable at the top of the tree and that's where he would stay. No one expected him to be scared. So Lance made up excuse after excuse. Um, saving the best for last. Uh, ladies first. Oh, oh uh, I have a bit of a cough today. He keeps saying all these things so he doesn't have to fall. But Lance couldn't trick them for long. Here he is. As leaf after leaf passed the final test, they started to talk. He's a scaredy leaf. I guess he's not good at everything. He's too yellow to be an evergreen. Oh no. Does it look like they're laughing at him? How does that make him feel? Oh, he's pretty sad. Cool days turned to colder nights and Lance decided he was going to beat the odds. He would stay on his tree all winter, just like Doug. It looks like we're going to be best friends. By the end of the week, Lance was the only leaf left on the tree. Lance's teacher knew he was worried, but she also knew he would be okay. Look at the teacher. Is the teacher part of the tree? It's okay to be scared, Lance. I'm here to help you through this. Lance thought about why he was scared. He was terrified of landing in a gutter or getting stuck on a windshield. Or worst of all, he was worried about falling where a dog did his business. Oh no, I bet you know what that is. Oh. After talking about his worries, Lance felt a little better. And he, when he looked down again, things didn't look so bad. Some kids had made the leaves into a leaf pile to jump in. Other kids were collecting leaves for crafts. Lance's friends were happy. They were safe and it looked like they were having fun. So Lance knew that it was time for him to take a leap. Okay, there he is. All right, he's ready. He's ready to fall. He's brave enough. Lance's teacher assured him that he could do it. He was one of the hardest working students in class. The other students cheered him on from down below. Ooh, now they're being so sweet to him and cheering for him. They were right. He could do it. He worked hard. He studied hard. He knew his stuff. Do you think he could do it? Take it away. I hope he can. Lance loved Doug, but Lance was not an evergreen. And he never would be. Lance looked down below. He took a deep breath. And with his stem quivering, he let go. Practicing what he studied, Lance focused and floated gently to the pile below. Was he so brave? He did it. Lance Cottonwood may have been the last one to finish his test, but he did not fail. He was once again on tap. You did it, Lance. The gang's all here. And then Steph Wade wrote some notes about Lance Cottonwood. You know what else is interesting with books? I like to look at a book and here's the cover and when I look inside there's usually a picture inside. Now here's the back cover. When I open the back cover look at this. The same. And this book has one more important piece. So remember the book jacket? Here it is. Now on the book jacket there are some pictures. Ooh, Look at this. So this lady, her name is Steph Wade. She's the one who went to St. Paul's School. And here's Jennifer Davidson. Jennifer Davidson made the pictures. Do you think they did a good job together with the pictures and the words for the story? I think they did. I like this one. All right, before we leave today, we're going to sing a song about these leaves. So I'm going to sing, and then you're going to echo me. And you're going to echo me when I tell the name of the leaf. 
So I am going to get some of my leaves ready. Oh, here it is. Here's the sycamore. Remember, this is the one that's as big as my face. There are many pretty leaves all around the world. Many pretty leaves all around the world. There are many pretty leaves all around the world. Here's a pretty leaf now. Now I'm going to sing, and then when I point to you, you can echo. It's a sycamore. It's a sycamore. It's a sycamore. It's a sycamore. There are many pretty leaves all around the world. Many pretty leaves all around the world. There are many pretty leaves all around the world. Here's a pretty leaf now. It's an oak leaf. It's an oak leaf. It's an oak leaf. It's an oak leaf. There are many pretty leaves all around the world. Many pretty leaves all around the world. There are many pretty leaves all around the world. Here's a pretty leaf now. It's a ginkgo. It's a ginkgo. It's a ginkgo. It's a ginkgo. There are many pretty leaves all around the world. Many pretty leaves all around the world. There are many pretty leaves all around the world. Here's a pretty leaf now. Ooh. Thanks for joining me. I hope you learned some things about trees and leaves. Great job, everybody. Bye-bye.